Well, what do we have here? It looks like somebody standing out in the field with a determined look on his face. Actually, that's yours truly, Richard Sisk, and I'm out here to capture an HDR photograph today, and I'm determined to get a good one. First thing I like to do when I set up for a photograph is to get the color temperature measured. The color temperature of the light falling on the scene uh, is very critical. In this case, the meter is telling me that the temperature is 5800 and 90 degrees Kelvin. So I round that off to 5900, the nearest 100, and enter that into the back of my Canon 5D Mark II. Now, you, if you use a Canon camera, you need to have it set on K in order to enter in the color temperature that uh, you want to use. Next, I, I have the Promote Control hooked up, and I'm going to enter in my settings here. I've got it set to capture nine exposures. Now, normally with a 5D Mark II, you can only capture three bracketed exposures. But with this little device, you can capture as many as you like to uh, ensure that you've captured the entire dynamic range of the scene. Well, looks like I'm level, and I have my settings squared away. But let's take a closer look at this scene before we shoot. Notice that the sky here is completely blown out and the shadows on my back are pretty dark. And that's because uh, digital cameras, at least at this point, are not able to capture this extreme sort of dynamic range. And that's why we're shooting HDR today. Well, I think I'm ready. Let's get this shot. And I think I've got it. So next thing is to head home, fire up the Mac, launch HDR Expose 2 and see if we can't tame this extreme brutal contrast. This is the final result. If you notice the sky is no longer blown out but it still retains a dynamic vibrant look. Uh, also if you notice look carefully you don't see any halos. That's uh, unique to unified color. Uh, the halo reduction uh, feature in uh, HDR Expose 2 is just extraordinary because it's transparent. You don't have to go to a lot of trouble to get the, these kind of results. The other thing I like about it is the uh, the color looks very much, uh, is very accurate to what I saw with my eyes when I was there. And that's uh, in great part due to the beyond RGB color space that Unified Color builds into their HDR software products. I'm very happy with this scene. I couldn't have got it any other way. Now let's head out and see if we can find another extreme contrast situation for creating uh, an HDR image. And uh, I, was, I was attracted to this little spot here with the little creek and the snow and the lighting was interesting. Uh, a lot of interesting details here. And um, I'm again measuring the color temperature and it was tricky here because uh, the sun was in and out I had to measure the color temperature of the, sh the uh, shade and as well as the sunlit areas and then average that out. I was also really concerned about whether HDR Exposed 2 would be able to handle uh, the motion in the creek because it was moving quite quickly. Now this is the center bracket. Again I did nine uh, exposures one stop apart and this is the center one. I brought it into Adobe Camera Raw and made some adjustments to tame the highlights as best I could and bring the shadows up. And then I also uh, processed it a little bit in Photoshop, tried to make it look good, gave it a little more uh, saturation, went into Vivesa 2, which is one of my favorite plugins, and did a little more work to try to get it to look the way I remembered the scene, uh, the way it's, it looked to my eyes. I just couldn't really uh, get it to look the way I wanted it to. So next I merged uh, the uh, TIFF files from Adobe Camera Raw this time into HDR Expose 2 and here's what the result looked like. Now I have detail in the shadows. The sky has been tamed. The bright sunlit areas of snow retain detail and color and the water looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. As a matter of fact, I'm extremely happy. If you notice, we've got a nice warm look in the sunlit areas and a cool look in the shaded areas. And that contrast between the cooler tones and warmer tones is partly what makes this an interesting scene, at least in my view. Let's take one more look at that single exposure. If you notice the difference, a lot less color in the uh, 
highlights in the sky. A lot less color and detail in the uh, shadowed areas and the areas with the, where the rocks are. There's practically no detail. So the sensor, again, uh, was not able uh, to capture those details. Part of the problem is modern digital camera sensors, even on the best cameras, uh, don't have a lot of bits down in the dark areas. So when you have this kind of contrast, HDR really comes into its own. Again, this scene, I'm, uh, I can't tell you how pleased I am with how uh, the uh, software has managed to restore the natural color and the natural look as my eyes saw it on, on location. And I have to thank the uh, uh, brilliant folks over at Unified Color for doing all the research and development on this product so that it's easy for me to get good results like this. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please check out our other tutorials for more information on using the software and optimal workflow techniques.